going on everyone so today we're looking at lead code number 796 it is a question called rotate string and so here we're giving two strings a and b and we want to see if if we rotate if string b is a rotation of string a so here you have input a a b c d e and we can see uh, string b is c d e a b but if we start here at this index uh, 3, we can see that A, B, C, D, E is in fact a rotated version of A. Okay, here in example 2, uh, we don't have a rotation. We have A, B, C, D, E, and we have A, B, C, E, e D. So that's going to return false. A and B will have a length at most of 100. Okay, so there is two ways we can go about this. There is an intuitive approach that's more of a brute force way of solving this, and there is a trick way of doing this that's much, much more efficient. So we'll go over both, both ways to kind of look at this in the conceptual. So if we do the brute force, how would we go about this? Okay, we have A, B, C, D, E, and then C, D, E, A, B. Well, one way we could do this is let's say we have... Um, an I pointer here and we have a J pointer over here okay and we iterate the J index until we have a match at I and J okay so J will come over here and then we can use the modulo operator to go and get all the strings of <clears throat> starting at J at the length of of this this string right over here so the length of this is one two three four five we can take, we can create a new substring that's going to be A, we'll increment J, this will be B. We'll use the mod operator, so J will come back to C, J will come to D, and J will come to E. And then we can check, are these two strings equal? Okay, so that's one way we could do it. The only problem is that would, that would be very expensive uh, time-wise because technically there could be a match at every single one of these strings and then we have to do a whole iteration to find the substring on each one of those so our worst case time complexity would be o of n squared uh, for this particular solution okay and then our space complexity is also going to it's going to be o of n because we're going to have to create a new string Actually, it would be O of n squared because technically we, we would have to create a new string on each one of these matches. So our space complexity would be O of n squared. So it's not good, but it works, and it's the intuitive way to kind of think about this problem. Now, we can come up with a more efficient way of doing this. Let's take a look at that. Okay, and this is kind of using a trick. And it's good to kind of just think about this. If you just think about this a little bit deeper, you can you can probably you can probably understand that this is this is one way of doing this that might make more sense so let's say we have this input string right here a b c d e and we concatenate it so we we just create a double version of this a b input string a and stick it together so for example we would have a b c d e plus a B C D E okay so now we have created a double version of our a string we've basically done a plus a is going to equal a okay and so now we can see that no matter what the rotation is going to be of string B here it's going to be in string a at some point Okay, so here we have C, D, E, A, B. We can see that it is right here, C, D, E, A, B. I'll use a different color here. It is a match right there. Okay, and that's just a linear time operation. We can, do, we, we can use a JavaScript um, includes method that does this for us, uh, that abstracts out um, any uh, any coding we can just do this with a one line shot but if you want to do it by hand you can use a sliding window approach to kind of find this uh, substring in a linear way 
So using this, using this strategy, what would be our time and space complexity? Well, our time complexity would be linear because we're going to have to do one scan through the array. And we're going to also have to create this substring, or not this substring, but this double string here. And that's going to also be a linear operation. So our time complexity here is going to be O of n. And what about space? Well, we do have to create new space relative to the size of the A input. So our space complexity is also going to be O of n, which is pretty good, which is not bad. OK, so let's, let's jump in the code. I'm not going to do the brute force uh, solution. We'll just do this more efficient solution here. And so first thing we want to do is we just want to check their base case is uh, if a dot length does not equal b dot length, we want to return false. Okay, and if a dot length, if they're both empty strings, um, equals zero, and b dot length equals zero. So if both the strings are empty, we want to return true. Okay, and now all we have to do is uh, concat a, so a is going to equal a plus a. And now we just return a dot includes b. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And we're good. Okay, so very, very easy to solve if we kind of know this trick. And it's, it's not too hard to come up with it. If we just kind of slow down, look at these two strings, write it out, you could probably come up with this in an in a interview. But if you are familiar with this, it'll definitely, you'll definitely remember it. Okay, so that is lead code number 796, rotate string. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next one.